Diane. Um, Tan se gakiao tuao, everyone, welcome. Um, it's so nice to be a, a part of this. And just hang on, something just popped up here. Oh, Diane's recording. Okay, so it's so nice to be a part of this and join in once again. We uh, are joined and blessed to have uh, Dr. Kevin Wasagai. Was <laughs> Wasaga Yesu uh, Lewis uh, is an assistant professor and also teaches in the Indigenous Language Certificate of the Faculty of Curriculum Studies in the College of Education at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, Dr. Kevin Lewis has worked with higher learning institutes within the Prairie Provinces of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta in Cree language development and instruction methodologies. Research interests have been language and policy development, second language teaching method methodologies, teacher education programming, and environmental education. Kevin has assisted in course delivery and language revitalization, as well as a second language education. For the past 19 years, Dr. Lewis has been working with, Cree, with community schools in promoting land-based education along with the Cree language and started grassroots non-for-profit charity group Ganyasic Culture Camps Incorporated. This group has formed his doctoral studies work, which is community driven to work with and along all ages, all experiences in all seasons. Dr. Lewis is from Ministiquan Lake, a Cree nation, and continues to teach about the importance of language and culture. So, I've uh, actually had the opportunity to attend Ganyasic culture camps in Ministiquan Lake. And if you haven't had an opportunity, I highly suggest you look it up because, oh, it was just such a beautiful time there on the land, right on the lake. And we were doing, um, it was a hide camp. And that's what I went to attend. And while my time there, it was just so much more than just a hide camp because we were learning and teaching each other to tan hides, working the side each other's, but also they were teaching us fish hide tanning and birch tapping and man, you name it, there was so much going on, hide uh, tool making and it's just an amazing experience. <laughs> and that was early April and it was just a beautiful time and not to even to mention the traditional foods they were feeding us there, stuffed heart and uh, yeah, all kind of good things there. But without further ado, um, I think I'll open the floor up to the amazing, as always, Dr. Kevin Lewis. And uh, yeah, it's yours. Take it away, Kevin. Oh, hey, hey. Uh, by the way, um, Jamie made some, uh, we call them moose guns during that, uh, when you come and visited us because of how hard work are, uh, you know, softening hides and scraping them, fleshing them and, uh, you know, all these. So uh, the term moose guns there, right there, see? So uh, it is a lot of work, but it is also lots of like lots of fun to to work on those hides. And uh, our spring camp, and I might as well just uh, uh, say it today. Um, we're uh, the date is uh, April long weekend. That's when we're going to start our our uh, hide camp. And I'm just waiting on a poster right now, so we'll um, just keep an eye out for it. But uh, April long weekend is uh, let's see here. Um, the 15th, that's when it's Good Friday, and we have it for 10 days. And you basically just choose your times during those 10 days, how long you think you, you want to stay. And uh, but uh, like, um, it's just not high tanning. We always want to make sure that it's like, uh, yes, you're, you're going to be eating probably moose fish and so on like that. I, you know, so moose ass, moose ass. Um, uh, is uh, bush food, um, bush meals, and then gistio is another way uh, that people say that as well is uh, things that are cooked. Um, so th these are feast foods um, that are very good for us, but we also have to uh, learn how to cook them, right? Learn how to cook over a fire, uh, uh, in a fire. Um, we've sort of lost those skills to doing that. So we're just really trying to revive everything. 
And this old lady uh, named Sally Whitefish Kagiti, the one that was uh, named Sally Whitefish, she, I have a picture of her with her old hands and she must have been about 86 or 87, something like that. She was up in her 80s and she was breaking up mint tea. And uh, she, this is our us listening to the elder and she's like, you know, it's, you have to eat, drink this. It's very medicinal. It's very good for us. We have to drink this. You have to eat these things, you know, and we're, uh, she was giving us the good foods that are good for our bodies, <clears throat> but also good for our minds. And um, our elders, our ancestors, they were so smart and they lived into well, well into their hundreds, over hundreds. And uh, it's because they had, uh, you know, today we go to Walmart and we go buy omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. We buy vitamins, we buy all these, uh, you know, and here it's in there. Those, those fish are eating the good medicines that we need for our bodies and our minds. Those moose, they're eating all those different medicines in the musk eggs and everywhere that they eat in the twigs. All those ducks that are going to come, they're, you know, they're a nice, going to be nice and fat. And, uh, you know, they, people used to go paddle and they would go duck egg hunting, you know. Uh, so all these beautiful springtime, I'm looking forward to it. Um, but that, that's, uh, that's what we're going to share at that camp. Oh, I am just trying to solidify and we're constantly learning we, we're constantly learning off of knowledge keepers um, people that are uh, birch bark biters okay so that these people they'll take like a thin piece of birch like this and they'll go and they'll, they'll fold it and they'll bite and it's beautiful art birch bark biters we might have two of them that are going to come come join us at that camp. So again, that's just an added thing uh, to the high can high tan canning uh, tanning camp. The other one is, uh, you know, what we do, and this is just us being really like uh, um, be critical on ourselves. So we go fish. Guess what we do? We'll cut it up, and we've been so happy. We're like, look at oh, we don't even waste anything. Oh, look at this is where you cut. You use, you use this knife right here, Mogoman. You cut this fish like this. And then you cut it. And you we don't want the skin on there. And then guess what we do with the skin? We toss it. We're like, nope, we're not eating the skin. Look at the fillet. It's so beautiful. We don't we, we eat everything. And then that used to uh, uh, bug me. And I'm like, okay, no, there's got to be something else here. So we have a uh, fish skin tanner that's going to come and join us this time around. And she's from Vancouver and she does like fish skin tanning of uh, all the salmon and all the, all the ocean fish. But we've tried these solutions with our uh, Mariah, Jacks, uh, all, all of our different fish that we have over here. Miyai, Atikamik, in Tuginosio. So, Utik, Utik, Usawas, I think Usawas Kwapis, all these different fish that we have over here. Uh, Ugao, that's the one I was trying to think of, Ugao, which is the pickerel. Um, so all of them have uh, names, three names, but that fish leather, it really is so beautiful because it used to be something that you would throw possibly in the garden or the compost, but now it has an additional use and just Google Gugliptamuk, fish skin uh, leather. And it's like, wow, it's like just another boom. I can't believe how creative we are as indigenous people, but it's the people used to make all sorts of everything with, uh, we never really threw away anything. Uh, so now I'm convinced after I saw that fish skin leather, and then of course the birch bark biters that are gonna show up and bless us. And um, uh, and then of course the, uh, the hides that are gonna be there. Pagi uh, Inokio, which is uh, we have buffalo hides, we have moose hides, we have elk hides, deer hides that need to be done. So um, keep an eye out for uh, keep an eye out for that um, that poster, and please come and join us um, up in in our, our neck of the woods and.
come learn skills, come learn um, how to be social. And you'll hear Cree everywhere. Um, that's what we do there. We just nihil ya tapto. So that's also, also a good experience to be in an actual real functioning camp. It's not, we just, it's just what we do. And um, just to try to normalize it. Uh, so again, uh, I just put the uh, the website in the, um, and I'll probably share it uh, on there, but just click on there and then keep an eye out for that and then possibly follow us on social media and whatnot. Okay, that's it. Today, uh, <clears throat> I wanted, um, so if you, if you saw there, I didn't see any requests for Diane to sing a song. So I'm just gonna pick a song that we're gonna sing. And um, she's gonna go live and recording this. Uh, just kidding. Everybody's gonna sing, all right? Today I was thinking about this. I'm like thinking and like I was uh, just wondering like, what can I teach? Like, what's the next step? What can I throw into this language learning? Because uh, language learning, you know, uh, we're trying to just keep the peak of interest and uh, make sure that everybody's still learning. And I'm just like, okay, we sung song, we, we, we sang. And I started thinking, well, how can you virtually dance? So that I was like, okay, no, maybe not dancing, maybe not a good idea right now. And then maybe next week, we'll mess around with this idea with Cree yoga, okay? Uh, just throw that out there, but we've been doing it. And it's been like, it's amazing to do like all these different poses uh, because of like, it's like, okay, I watch this, I see what you and you're doing all these stretching and uh, and twisting and holding these poses. It's just amazing. You don't even that need that big of space, right? You just need a little space, and it was uh, it's so much fun. Um, but we'll, we'll, that's something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try to see if I can do this. So hopefully, you guys can have musneganachigus. Uh, a little pen or pencil or writing thing, and uh, maybe a pad, okay? Because today we're gonna, I'm gonna attempt this. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see if I can teach you guys how to write syllabics, okay? So syllabic day to day, all right? So I was like, that's a no brainer. How come I did, well, we should have just threw that in first or second class. So I'm like, but it is right today. That's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll start it off and we'll, uh, I'm going to share a screen. I'll share this screen because there's a, there's a perfect, perfect song. And we, we sang this a couple of times. Like I always, I always use this particular one because my Nchua, um Wayne Jackson sings this one. And this is also that lullaby, but also where we got this one song was from Elder uh, Jerry Saddleback. He was very innovative uh, with the syllabics. And he was so innovative, just like Brian McDonald was innovative with all those, hello, hello, dance, right? That song. And then this, um, uh, Jerry, uh, I call him Nuhchawi. He's Nuhchawi. He's Nuhchawi. Uh, so he's uh, an uncle uh, in relation. So when I see him, ah, that's an uchaw, he's gas, you know. And um, so again, he, this was uh, a, a song that he would use the guitar. And uh, we'll start out with these just to know how they sound. And you can sing along if you can, and you should. Uh, and you don't have to unmute, just sing in your own, just like nobody's watching. That's what I always want to say that. Just like when you're in a shower and singing and like nobody's hearing you or you're driving a vehicle for those that can drive, uh, sing like that, okay? All right, so we'll start out with the first one. It's A, E, E, O. Ba, Be, Bi, Bo. Oh, maybe I can use my cursor. Da, De, Di, Do. Ga, Ge, Ki go za che chi jo ma me mi mo na ne ni no 
sa, se, si, so, and then ya, ye, hi, yo. Okay, so we'll go through this a couple. There's a tune to this, and um, and you can listen to this. But what uh, my uh, the way I learned, I was trying to learn like this with um, like uh, with this format up and down and horizontal and you know it just I couldn't couldn't do it. It wasn't until the uh, how it was put in the star chart. And that the star chart is the one that I'm going to use eventually. But let's just sing first. Let's get the, that out of the way. So you get the Cree mind. Nihil okay? Chigan, the Cree mind. Okay. All right. So the tune goes like this, and we'll do it a couple times. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use my cursor as I sing. And um, nominate me for Junos if you like this song you know just throwing it out there all right just kidding just kidding I'm not the best singer but I just try doesn't matter we just need to normalize this all right so here's the song Sa che chi cho ma ma mi mo na na ni no sa se si so ya ye yi yo. All right. So again, we'll start again right at the at the top. A e i o pa pa pi po. Ta te ti to ka ka ki ko cha che chi cho ma ma mi mo na na ni no sa se si so ya ye yi yo Okay, so that's the tune. And uh, you can practice it. Uh, you can always uh, go back to the video because it is recorded and then you can just go scroll back a little bit and i i, I sing low maybe you have a higher uh, voice but you just sing to your your tone okay i'm gonna stop sharing this but that's there oh i should put that um it's this where i found it i just google nigoog and then i put in syllabics and it, uh, this popped up. And this guy is an amazing teacher as well, Saul, uh, Solomo, Solomon. Uh, he's, he's got the uh, song right here. Okay. And Solomon Rat uh, is, uh, and there's Wayne right there singing to his, uh, his baby there. All right. So there's the markers, and that's the Slavic song. Okay. All right. So I'll stop sharing this one. Excuse me, sir. Dr. Lewis? Uh, yes. Uh, may I ask a quick question? Yes. I think I'm losing you. Hold on. Hello? Are you there? Yep. Oh, okay. Perfect. Excellent. Um, I was just wondering, um, in the syllabic song that you sing, um, I noticed that... Um, uh, when you're singing it, uh, you're you're singing the I uh, syllabic as E, and I was wondering, um, is that because it was generalized for all of the uh, different dialects, or um, is that the representation of the elongated vowel? I'm I'm just a little bit confused because I I learned the syllabics um, as uh, the regular vowel and the elongated vowel and. Uh, that looks like the regular vowel, and I was just very confused. Maybe it was because I was specifically learned the Plains Cree dialect, but I wasn't sure. Oh no, that's just um uh, the song. It's just like uh yeah, it's just the song and the tune. Uh, of, of course, it is a short sound. Um, and then if there's a if there's a macron or um, a circumflex on top, yes, you are right. It would be long, but it's just the it, it's a uh, uh, so it's uh, simplified uh, for the song yeah oh yeah ah yeah. okay and it's just singing the tunes like if we're it's just the the song that makes it sound long yeah 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 
Okay, yeah, thank, yeah. thank so, you so much for clarifying, Dr. Lewis, yeah. thank you. Yeah, no, no problem, that's good. Uh, okay, now we're gonna go to um, the, uh, the chart now. And this one was the ping, that one was the one that did it for me. And uh, I'll go to the whiteboard and I'll see if I can uh, figure out a way where I can. So you're going to have to put your, um, your writing pad or your page sort of landscape style. All right. Not horizontal, but landscape style. Okay. And uh, we're going to try to draw. I'm going to try to draw. Um, over here, um, I'll start out with drawing a puppy or a dog, okay? And this puppy or dog is uh, in Cree, ah, a dim, a dim, okay? And uh, please take it easy on my drawing skills. Do not, uh... so you're gonna draw as you're drawing your dog. Um, I'm drawing mine. Oh, man, I, that's a funny looking dog. Okay. Oh, that looks like a rabbit actually, but this is my dog. Okay. Oh man, this looks like a rabbit. Okay. I'm going to put a collar on this dog because rabbits don't wear collars. Dogs do. Okay. Oh yeah. What the heck? And then look at my tail. My tail's going to be the one that's going to give it away that a dim. Okay. There we go. Save that, didn't I? Okay. A dim. Okay. So this is a, a, a dim. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So the, uh, the first, uh, the, <laughs> the first syllable. Oh, he sucks. Okay. Draw. <laughs> Let's see if I can draw now. No, I can't draw. All right. So it's pointing this way. Okay. It's pointing at a dim. So this represents a, 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 a dim. Okay. So the, the syllabic that is pointing towards a dim looks like that. A, a, a dim. And uh, the next one. I'm gonna move my little drawing pad to the side if I can. Okay, I can. Um, the next one is gonna be pointing uh, on top like this towards the top, and then this one's ah ah i i i squeal. And I'm gonna oh Women's Day today, perfect. Look at this, eh? So here's the address that represents um uh. The, the women, um, and there's her beautiful, beautiful head and her little arms. And this is eh, eh, is squeal, okay? Is squeal. So ah, ah, a dim, eh, eh, is squeal. Now this one here, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use a version of orange. Not everybody calls orange this one, but this one is pointing this way. And I'm going to use and uh, a, a possibly a new word, and it's orange. And it's usawas, usawas, okay? <clears throat> and it's a circle, maybe with a little button on top or whatever where the, it fell off the tree. But this is my usawas. It's really easy. Uh, you can use... Uh, any picture in there, like Uskwagan, if you want to use like a pipe, maybe too sacred, or Uchik, something with a oh, oh, oh for your region. Okay. So a dim and a squeal work, but when I always go to the different regions, they're like, ah, what the heck is Usawa? So I don't understand you, but that, it's, a, it's a word for orange. It's a version for a word for orange. Underneath here at the bottom, I'm going to draw a spoon. All right. And this is Imiguanis or Imiguan. All right. So, oh, that's my, that's the nicest spoon I've drawn in a while. All right. So, Usawas, Imiguanis, A, A, A. And this one is pointing down, downwards, like that. Yeah. 
So these four syllabic, ah, ah, atim, all right? Jeez, my, I don't, my dog is just crazy looking. Eh, eh, is squeal. And is squeal gisegao. Mu is squeal gisegao. It's Woman's Day today. So this is perfect. Uh, what about that, eh? Uh, so greetings to everybody, all the women. And um, before I go on, maybe uh, we have a grandmother. You know, all, all around us in our ceremonies, uh, we give thanks to the winged beings. Uh, we give thanks to the, the sun and the moon, like that realm. Um, we give thanks uh, to the a little lower to the flyers where the thunder beings, eagles, and so on. Like we give thanks there. We give thanks to the elements of uh, wind, you know, uh, fire, uh, water, all those are relatives. And then uh, we give thanks to the four leggeds, right? All the buffaloes, the moose, the deer, everything. And you know, um, we don't get into the picture of giving thanks until right at the end. And it's not a man that represents us. It's a nutubu. It's a grandmother that represents us. So the two-legged is not a man that represents it. It's a, it's a woman. And she was the one that can give life. She can bear child and she can give life. And this is why teaching treaties is very important because as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, rivers flow, uh, the rivers and water and women are associated with fire as well, spirit. Um, carrying two heartbeats and uh, us men we can only carry one heartbeat but women they can carry two heartbeats so there's drum teachings in there as well so again uh, just a really good uh, teaching you know time right here to acknowledge our our grandmothers our tapans our moms and then of course um, uh, that nutugu that represents us on the south side of a lot of our lodges and how, where we pray to her. So she represents all the two like it's a woman, right? So how powerful is that? So again, um, going around again, uh, uh, this is ah, ah, atim, eh, eh, isquil, uh, uh, usawas, eh, eh, emeguanis. Okay, so the next one that I draw or write, I should say maybe, is uh, this one is looks like a pie or a pizza or something like that, but it pa pa pa. So this first one is ah ah, and then this one that that's pointing to a tim. This is pa pa pa. The next one is okay just got unstable on me for a little while the next here is okay and that looks like not really a, so this is a pa ta that point to a dim my poor a dim i can't believe i drew a dim okay like that okay so now uh, learning about this ah uh, ta, and taking into account the idea of that birch bark biting, and everybody somewhere at some time was taught how to fold paper, okay? And we were you fold it in half, right? And you fold it in half again, and then you get basquamato and uh, scissors, and you cut, cut, then you fold, and you cut, right? The same idea is uh, that's what they do with um, birch bark biters and they'll fold and they'll bite and they'll imprint. So this is a carbon copy. What we're doing is we're gonna, we're just starting a carbon copy and the star chart. So these, this first one is eh, and the next one is, looks like a pie again or a pizza. So this is eh, be. This next one is be and this next one is going to look like uh, a hill or uh, on top of a hill. And the way I remembered this was this woman 
to me was standing on top of a, of a hill, so t t t. So that made a a, a t t t sound to me, right? So, um, so you find tricks on how to how to use these mnemonics or these uh these ways to remember. Okay. So i p t. And you and if you need to, okay. Uh, you can even write at the bottom here, if you really need this, you can write an A, and then you can write a PA, if that helps, okay? If that helps you remember these, you can do that. And then, of course, uh, ta with a T, a TA, like that, ta. So, ah, pa, ta. And same thing up here, you can write it if you want to. Sometimes your eyes will want to cheat and you'll be like, oh, okay, I'm looking at the letters that I recognize from English, right? Roman orthography. So I always say, you know, it's your discretion uh, or you can try to test yourself and try to remember them. So, and then, oh, osawas, oh, po, and to. And then at the bottom, this is emiguanis, emiguanis, e, de, and de. All right. So we're going to write using these a couple of words here on the side, and then I'll, I'll, I'll erase them, but I'll just, um, uh, anybody, let's try this. What's the word for sit in Cree? Ape. Ape. Oh. All right. So you hear this one word or this the sound ah ah ah, right? So this reminds me of this ah atim. So I'm gonna write ape, okay, using syllabics. Ah ah ah, and then we have pe pe. Pe, right here. This is e esquio. This is te. This is pe. So this is syllabics for saying sit. A pe. A pe. There's your first word right there. A pe. A pe. So now we're writing and reading syllabics using uh, topics that we hear. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, uh, this one. Uh, One. Sorry, Dr. Lewis, where I think your connection might be a bit unstable. I've asked everybody if they could turn off their uh, cameras. I think that might help with the bandwidth a little bit, but we keep losing you or you keep freezing. Okay. Can somebody uh, read this one? Oh, write it in the, yeah, okay, there we go. Pape, pape. And uh, I'm not purposely putting uh, long sounds on this yet, but uh, is laugh, is smile. Pape uh, is a command word saying uh, smile or laugh, okay? So, uh, Julia, you are bang on, okay? Uh, what about this one? Um, somebody can read this one, just using with the, the syllabics that you have right now. Uh, let's see. Like this. See if you can write that in the... Uh, yes. And this is a word where you say uta. Uta. Right here. Uta. 
right? Uta. So um, if uh, somebody, where are you? If somebody's asking you, Tantea in Uta, Calgary, Uta, Saskatoon, Uta, Vancouver, Uta, right? La Larange, or wherever you might be. So you can, if somebody's asking you, where are you? Tantea in, where are you? Uta, blah, 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 wherever that place is, okay? So there's syllabics again. Um, oh, this one's a real funny one. I like this one. Well, I don't really like to hear it, but I, uh, kids say this one all the time, especially with my little ones. I remember them saying, uh, saying this word. What is that one? So you get hurt, you're like, ah, yeah, tanui pupu. So that's pupu. Right. <laughs> so poo poo. Uh, so that's an actual word that people people will say tamam poo poo. Oh ma poo poo. Right. But that's how you would write it. Right. So Heidi, <coughs> perfect. Right. Um. Uh, okay. Here's another one. Um. Uh. Okay. I'm gonna write this one. And I'll go like this. All right. So that one. What is that one? Perfect. Corinne. Pupata. Pupata. So what that is is let's say I have a um um a candle and here's a really really good thing to teach right now is um uh breathing techniques right now okay and this is very very good this is some of the stuff that we've researched and, and thought about let's say you know this uh earlier on i was just teasing uh diane that she was gonna sing and she was like no 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 don't do that i'm not gonna sing what are you doing and she disappeared to her video you know now i was just teasing of course but that was uh uh, sometimes that that could be seen as mean okay now let's say you get uh i get hyperventilation or you get um uh get scared to use your language to sing that song that we just sung if you're gonna uh speak the language that's very very uh stressful I want I want you to to know that that it, it can get very stressful, um, but I want you also to know that there are breathing techniques that you can do to settle yourself down to get yourself into a state where you can learn. When you become nervous, when you become scared, or you get triggered, it's very hard. Never mind to to uh, learn a, a Cree Kanihiawi, right? So I want to tell you pupata uh, pupata so meaning that um you're blowing out five candles okay this is a, an actual really good technique for language learning but also now that um, we're taking these off right now because we've been you know we've been in that state for for 23 24 months where we were um away from people and now we're starting to gather anxiety comes right you start worrying about um you know this this uh mantus, this little little minute bug this really microscopic um but it's breathing techniques so pupata, you can use this there and i would pr uh promote this to uh, right now to uh get yourself in that calm level to learn okay so umanigan so these are candles birthday birthday candles so we will we'll try this and we're gonna try to use also um calling our grandfather the wind uh is our grandfather the wind you uh, calling that one in to help us calm ourselves down as well and then pupata umanigan piak okay so you breathe in and you take your breath in, you try to take four seconds to breathe in and you hold it for four seconds, right? And then breathe the first one in, pupata. Okay, one. And then again, you breathe in through your nose, hold it in, 
Blow upata, puttak. Breathe in again. Hold it in. Two, three, four, pupata. Okay. Ni sugyapits. Gasamina. Breathe in. Pupata. Gasamina squares. Breathe in. Hold. Two, three, four, pupata. So that little technique of uh, uh, breathing and, and uh, letting go uh, will calm yourself and you should be able to hopefully uh, teach this, teach this to our loved ones, okay? So again, those are just quick examples of how, how to uh, teach and read, and you guys are reading. You guys are reading Slavic already. Wow. Hey, who would have thought? Um, again, now. Um, oh, uh, pupata. The meaning pupata is to blow. Because it's uh, it's blowing out these five candles, and they're blowing each one. Pupata, 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 pupata. Right. So you're, it's a command word for blow out or or blow something, uh, right? Uh, okay. Um, now up in this corner, uh, I'm just sounding like a a boxing announcer. All right. So you're gonna draw a ki, uh, mikisu. Mikisu is a bald eagle. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Let's see if I can draw a bald eagle. All right, I should be able to draw a good bald eagle here. All right, there we go. Oh, that's a nice peak. Mikisua, okay. Oh, look at this mushroom. All right. I know it's uh, an eye. I'll try to draw an eye there. Uh oh, not too good of an eye, but anyway. Mikisu, okay. Mikisu is a um, a bald eagle, the one that has white head. Okay, that's that's the bald eagle. All right. So uh, that one, because it's pointing to this eagle, and I'm just going to be cognizant of time here. Uh, the first one that we draw that way looks like this, and this is. Me, 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 Mikisu. So Mikisu is an eagle, Mikisu. And the first one is me, me, and it looks like that. And uh, I also use a mnemonic. Um, and again, this was taught to me as an adult. I couldn't remember any of these until I, I uh, started uh, learning. And it was a, a lady, a real good amazing teacher um her name's dr diane steinauer and she taught me this one time and i'm like boom it just locked in and dr uh marilyn shirt was there as well uh dr leona makokis was there in the room and we we're just like i just one time showing me this and it locked in there and this mnemonic um was my kukum needs your spare change oops change that's how we so you're actually just trying to remember m k n y s j so six syllabic that are gonna be pointing to this mikisu okay so that's why we use this my google needs your spare change okay and uh if you're a th dialect speaker you're gonna throw thank you at the end which is the, the, okay um now uh, me, uh, ke, it looks like this. Oops, ke looks like this here, uh, like this. Okay, ke, me, ke, ne, looks like this over there, something like that. Me, ke, ne, ye, looks like this one. And then, se, looks like this oh dear 
Uh, that's not bad. And then last one is J. It looks like a wapahan or a candy cane, if you will. All right. So, me, ge, ne, ye, se, ce. All right. Again, me, ke, su, me. So, they all have this i, i, i sound to them. All right. So, me, ke, ne, ye, se, ce. Now, as carbon copying goes, all right, all these ones that are flipped like this diagonally, those are all going to flip like this. And um, we're going to use mean gun. And I used to draw like a white picket fence for some odd reason. I don't know why, but the white picket fence was something I always drew. Then I was like, the original mean gun is... Uh, they, they used to use them for caribou, but they also use them for rabbits. So uh, main gun, or in my area, we, we say mean gun, but main gun uh, for the sake of like the, the direction, main gun is the fence. So you can draw it all crazy, like uh, little twigs like this. You can draw little twigs like this, okay? And they can be just all over the place. You don't have to be an artist. Look at this. Look at me draw this fence. And on this side, I'm going to draw a crazy fence as well. But these are my twigs that I use that I'm breaking off the trees because I want to make sure I'm going to have rabbit tonight. Okay. So there's my mean gun. And I would put my snare right here. Yummy. Okay. So there's my mean gun. Now you guys get it. And you and they used to do this for everything, for moose, for deer, for all these, uh, the old trappers, the old hunters. So mean gun. And I used to draw a white fence. I'm like, what the heck am I bothering that stuff for? It's so uh, co colonial. Um, so main gun is this one. Look at the carbon copy. So it's going to look exactly like this side. So this is me. Me for a main gun, and then me, ge, ne, uh, ye, se, and te, like that. Okay, so that's main gun. So if everybody understands that now i'm just gonna draw like an old school main gun down here at the bottom is now i'm gonna try to draw this guy and uh sometimes i'm pretty good at drawing him but maybe not tonight because if my dog looks like that oh yeah all right and this one this guy sounds like this one uh uh in the fall he goes oh Oh. Okay. Any guesses what that is? They have little eyes to these guys. They have no uh, big nostrils on them. Moussa. Hey, yes. Mark and Darla. Yeah, Julie. Yeah, good guess. Moussa. So now this first one is always starts with a mm, mm sound okay so at the bottom of this one mo 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 go 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 no 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 yo 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 so 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 and so 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 Okay, so mo, ko, no, yo, so, cho. And then here is my double check, the double check I have all of them. My Google needs your spare change. So these all have those sounds. I got to make sure I've got all of them. And then now this one is always the mushroom that always troubles me. I don't know how to draw him very well. But this one is 
Okay, Masqua. Oh dear, I'm already messing it up. Masqua. Uh, boy. Okay, and he's a big, big, strong guy. Here's my bear. <laughs> And just for that, I'm going to draw a paw, and he's going to have claws, just because he has big claws, that's this guy. Okay, there. Now proving that's masqua, like this, masqua, okay? So masqua, the first one is ma, all right? Maybe a little longer on this side, ma. And then ka, na. Like this, ya, sa, and lastly, ta. All right, so that's the star chart in its in almost entirety. All right, and hopefully, yeah, I think people are are um, showing some. Uh, some, uh, hopefully some pictures and some files uh, in the chat as well. It's really nice to actually find things, find gems and share those uh, if you can. But uh, this is the star chart and I've seen this. Um, you can Google this and Carl, uh, Nistao, Carl Quinn has it on a CD. Um, and I love that, that he does includes the R dialect and the L dialect in his uh, CD, right? So there's uh, uh, re, ra, re, ro, and la, le, le, lo. That's uh, also can be shared in, uh, and they read that. They read that. You know what? The, okay, lastly, because we have just a few more minutes here. You see this in the middle here? You have a, e, o, e, okay? And I'm gonna make W sound, the W sound. And I want to, in, I want to show you guys something. And the Eastern Cree are relatives because we have relatives over there. So th this is uh, I or ah, sorry. And th this is next one is I. And this next one is uh, oh. And the last one is a. Okay. Now, if you put a, a dot on, on the right side, on the east side, I guess, or on the right side, we'll just say right side, this changes into a wa, wa sound. And this changes into a wi sound. This, a dot on that side, changes that into a wo sound. And then on this side, of this one changes that into a way. So this is a wa, we, wo, wo. Okay. Now, because we have these sounds, I'll show you an awesome, awesome word. Okay. And this is an amazing word. Okay. So this, uh, I'm using that chart right there. And I'm going to show you, uh, somebody had mentioned that there's elongated, like long sounds, okay? So, uh, you just put a dot on top, just like a macron, you know, when you write danse, um, you put a long sound, making it on top. What's this word? What did I just write right here? Yes, Jamie's got it. Wah, wah. Okay. And that's such a good word for uh, awesome, amazing. Um, it's, a, it's an expressive word. It's like if you're amazed at something, wah, wah, right? It's a really, really good word to know. And that's what syllabics did for me when I learned how to read it and I learned how to write it. I was like, wow, wow, you know, that was so beautiful. And hopefully you can just keep on practicing and we'll add to this because there's a few more little tricks that I wanted to add to this. Um, but we'll, we'll just stop there for now. 
and um, we'll just uh, uh, take maybe some questions that you might have, uh, but you're reading and writing syllabics. Uh, this is a start um, and just, you just have to keep on, uh, keep at it and learn little tricks, you know, because not all of us learn the same way. Sometimes like, uh, and this was late George Breton, my, uh, and I miss the dear, the, you know, I miss him because he was such a beautiful elder, but I still uh, use a lot of his teachings, a lot of his uh, examples. And he was sitting in Edmonton and um, this uh, syllabics is used on, um, uh, in, in Uptatut, they read and write in syllabics, Eastern Cree, here's the difference. You see the, the dots that we have on, on the one side where we write it on, on the right side? Their W sound, they write on the other side. So their, their W sound, they'll put a dot on the left side. So that's the Eastern Cree writing. So you can read and write Eastern Cree now using this. You can read Inuktitut. And if somebody has 50 bucks, if somebody is ever that rich to have 50 bucks, watch, look and look for syllabics on the $50 bill. And I promise you, there is a $50, on the $50 bill, there's syllabics on there. I bet you, no, just kidding. I better not be betting, eh, gee, you guys. Okay, so uh, I'll stop sharing, but that's so cool to, to know that there's syllabics. Oh, going back to George Breton's. Uh, so George was sitting and he was uh, sitting at, the, at a bus station. And he was going to he was off somewhere and he was practicing and learning syllabics in his retirement like this is something that he wanted to learn right and he was practicing reading syllabics so it's never too late and you're never too old to learn that's the number one thing keep our mind sharp using this you'll remember numbers you'll remember names you'll remember keep keep sharp this is a, a tool so he's sitting there and he's reading, and then this uh, Inuk, Inuk came and sat right beside him and started reading what he was reading, and he sounded like he was like, "Where are you from?" Tati Uchigia, right? And he's like, oh, "I don't know what I'm reading, but I just can I know how to read it because I was taught it in school." And he was sounding like he was reading like Cree, and which he was, but he didn't know what he was reading, right? So again, just an amazing story. I'm like, "Wow, that was that was beautiful." Uh, but I'll stop sharing that and uh, and thank you for that quick little journey uh, learning syllabics. It's a, it's, it is a lot of fun. Um, all ages pick it up, but we just have to just keep on practicing and practicing using writing. Um, write your names, write wapus, write atim, uh, write all those different uh, words that we, we heard and shared today. Uh, and we'll we'll add to it because there's n consonants there as well, uh, but you know the sounds now, and we just have to practice, learn, write, um, and bring up our literacy. You guys just learn syllabics. So proud of you. I was just looking at the chat, uh, and because these ones are are newer questions because they're relevant to what we just learned with the star chart. Is this method of drawing the bear, eagle, spoon, et cetera, a common way of learning the star chart? And that question is by Relic LeBlanc. Oh, no, no. It's just, uh, um, you just, it's just how to remember them. And it helped me as an adult learning, trying to learn syllabics. And I was trying with Google, um, and she, was, she reads the Bible, and uh, that up and down, you know, side to side way, it was just not clicking in and it was uh it was uh, it wasn't until i could picture and using um a dim and of course i draw a dim way better than that i was geez i'm so oh <laughs> but all but all of those you know um and i tried uh in minus was actually in uh in where the mikisu is right where the eagle but we call minus a cat and then I went somewhere else and I was trying to teach Minus. I'm like, what is Minus? I don't understand. We don't call Minus Minus. It's Pusis. And I'm like, it's clearly a cat. Uh, but it was like, nope, I got to try something else. So you can you can alternate, uh, like you can use 
other uh, visual or artistic, whatever it is, just as long as they have that ah, 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 mm, 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 uh, eh, 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 uh, me, 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 right? Oh, 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 mu, 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 eh, 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 and then ma, 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 right? So if they have that sound, uh, use them and um, all those, uh, all, all the artistic stuff, there's artists and this way of learning is hitting all these different spots in the brain. That's what's happening. And it's like magical because you're drawing and you're doing your creative side. And plus you're using these, these geometric symbols. And plus the spiritual side is Atak is a spirit marker. So, and the teaching is when you start writing these, our relatives, wherever they are waiting for us, they went ahead of us, they can read those syllabics. That's what part of the teaching is. So it's amazing to communicate that way. All right, next question, Kevin, is from Mark and Darla Van Pelt. Can you please explain the difference in sound between the syllabics of Isquiu and Mikasu? Um, let's see. Uh, oh, like Mikasu and Isquiu? Yes. Okay. So they explain it. Um, let's see. Mikasu. Let's, let's, I'll just write it in SRO in the chat. Okay. So Mikasu is, would, would be written like that. And then Isquiu would be written like that. So that, so visually you can read and see Mikisu and Isquil. Eh, eh. Hi, Kevin. I was curious about the difference between how they sound, because to me, they sound the same. So this is all really new. So underneath the squale in the star chart, where it, it shows the i, i, di, and then the ones diagonally heading toward the bald eagle, they sound very similar. Am I missing something? Nope, that's, nope, that's your, your hearing. Your hearing and seeing. So all of those have uh, uh, me, ki, ni, ye, si, chi. So they all have a mm sound in there. Me. Or uh, sorry, that i sound. Uh, oh, okay. So it's me, ki, ne, si, ti, right? Or ye, ti. Gotcha. Okay, so the vowel is the same. Yeah, it's the vowel is the same. Yeah, it's okay. I, 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 yeah. Thank you. That clears that up. Yeah. Okay, and there was a question from way back that I wrote down. Uh, where did I write that? And uh, the lady was asking, Teresa Stevenson is asked, is fish skin tanning a traditional practice in the prairies? I think it was traded, just like all the different technologies, like um, snowshoes. They have different, um, different things that we did. Uh, and they use teas. Like if you have tea, uh, you can fish, you can tan uh, skins. And of course we tried it and uh, we, we actually made fish skin leather uh, and it's different teas. You can dye using berries. You can dye different teas that you use that are green, red, blue, purple. It's like, it's so amazing on how, how we've had all these different things, right? Um, so yeah, I'm going to say, I guarantee we did. Jamie, did you notice the question in there? There is a question, Dr. Lewis, from a man that was back earlier when we started. And it said she has, uh, as a part of introduction, is saying what clan you are from. Um, she is a foster child and has no knowledge of her indigenous roots. How would she introduce herself? Oh, okay, yeah, it's more um, for clans, um, 
for Cree, we'll say this is they'll they'll say this um from and then uh, who are you? So kinship, our kinship terms are very, very or Ojibwe, they'll say their clans because they're it's built into their um, their governance system and their their kinship and their community system. But whereas us, Tanti uh, right? They're, they're, those are questions that they'll try to figure out a connection on who you're related to but the um the, the naming part is um uh, where you'll find out who they'll say which is who's your namesake or what what uh what um special connection do you have possibly like let's say if you're married uh, if you're called um white uh wapogwani let's just say that right uh, white flower then your kikwi me is mother earth that's mother earth any because she looks after things that grow um sometimes people will get like thunder being like thunderbird names so guess who your your uh, your kinship or your relatives on that level is well the thunder beings right so again you'll 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 get that when you get the name and uh, the kinship will, will follow that. And then, of course, if you are 60 scoops or, or 60 scoop or residential school or, or disconnected from a community, um, approach an elder watch. They'll, they'll connect you really fast and things will start falling into place. Very amazing the way those elders are, the, the, the way they, they connect us and find our, find our gifts. Everyone has a gift. So a question here from Val Daniels. Can Kevin save his picture for us? And I think she meant the star chart, not your atim. Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> I'll be honored to save that awesome drawing. <laughs> if it's still on there, I hope it's still on there. I, I hope it's saved. Let's just see. Okay, there we go. Um, now, somebody has to walk me through how to save this thing. I guess just save right here, right? Save. I was also going to say, Kevin, it'll be in the video as well for anybody oh, okay. who wants to go back in the video because I can't, I don't know if I can help you with saving that. Maybe somebody out there can. I'm not sure how to save that either. Yeah, but it will be in the recording and I'll get that up onto the website tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, so everyone's saying take a picture. Okay, um, yeah, you could, you could do that. So I seen another another comment there or a question, and I think it was uh I'm just trying to scroll back, it keeps jumping around on me. Too many comments, I think, which is a good thing. Um, how do you spell muistas? Muistas, see you later. Okay. Like that, muistas. And then Graz Zapta asked, how can we attend this camp you have mentioned? So your, your hide camp, I'm guessing, is what Graz Zapta is uh, referring to. Oh, yeah. To. Yeah. Well, what I'll we'll do is um, I'll try to, uh, I'll try to, um, like, uh, with the website, Ganyasic Culture Camps, you can Google or, or, uh, you find us on Facebook and then there's a poster that we'll send out there. Yeah. We'll send out there for people that want to uh, come and join us and um, learn that, that beautiful skill of hide tanning. All right. We don't know yet. Maybe I'll see you again then. Yes. Cause there's like, it's like other stuff, right. That we threw in there. And of course it's like that downtime where you just finished putting a solution on a on a tanned hide and you want to give your muscles a rest so there's another activity that you might as well learn right and that, that's why we started deciding to bring in the the birch bark fighters and hopefully the sap is running at that time 
Kevin, uh, Corrine Bell asked, do you have a link for Elder Watch? What is that Elder Watch? I don't know, Corrine, uh, would you like to elaborate on that? Is that like my Google when she's peeking through and finding out? The neighborhood watch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Google just phones everybody. Eh? Hey. <laughs> what? No, I don't know what that is. I just tried Googling and, and it didn't come up. So I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if this question was asked, it's by Brenda McIntyre. How do we say our name and clan then, if we have? And where and when would we share our spirit name and clan? Okay, yes. Uh, in ceremony, of course, you would say it, but it's also like, okay, here's an explanation for my name. Like, uh, uh, So you have Kevin Lewis, which is my body. This is the body that, I'm, that I have. So I have acceptance of this body. And a lot of people know this as Kevin Lewis, but the spirit, the one that uh, is doing this earth walk with this body is Washagayasu. So Washagayasu was given to me by um, uh, late Norman Thomas, who was from Chirik Lake. And um, so there's songs and there's, uh, they'll, they'll give you directions there. there there's uh, how to spell it phonetically, like try to spell it phonetically and try to remember that because It'll help you. It'll give you deja vu. It'll like it'll give you um, sort of like that gut feeling. It's like, oh, this feels right. You know, I think I think we should do it. You know, or it'll warn you and keep you safe as well. And you can also pray to that spirit, right? Because that's the one that's gonna walk ahead. This body, Kevin Lewis, is gonna stay, but the spirit is gonna move forward. So that's why we don't have a goodbye. So again, all the all the clan system like uh, uh, and so it's like they'll give you that kinship they'll give you that direction um depending on uh the, the elder the elder will give you that um that direction and i don't have that um uh, that ability to give names and stuff like that because there's elders and protocols probably maybe in the future maybe i can do that if i have white hair maybe i can do that or Get gifted, but my, I have uncles and relatives, and uh, my family members. They they do do that. I've seen them do it, and it's um it's amazing to see. You know, there's prayers that are involved, protocols, usually gifts, tobacco for sure, for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, they're they're very good. To, it's like you, yeah, it's 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 part of the learning process. It's it's a beautiful way, and we I don't think we should ever let go of giving our our getting our spirit names um you know naming our spirits and finding out i don't think we should ever let or lose that um it is who we are as indigenous people we should name we should know the name of our spirits all of us have them thank you kevin uh, marla kimball asked uh where are the camps located so the camps are located in Ministiquan Lake in northeastern Saskatchewan, northwestern Saskatchewan, yep. Ministiquan yep. Lake. So if, you, if you're living in Alberta, uh, Cold Lake, Alberta is town for us. That's where town is for us. So we're like 40 minutes, four to five minutes away, depending on how, uh, how much you want to drink Tim Hortons. You'll get there in forty minutes or less, <laughs> but that's that's town for us. So it just gives you an idea of the vicinity, like how far it is. But just on the Saskatchewan side, so we're just about like Albertans. We spend so much time in Alberta, we might as well be our Albertans. And then uh, Tracy Tracy asked if you can type the word in SRO for your picket fence, please. Your snare. Oh yes. Okay. Min gun, min gun. And then I'm just looking, Ryan Chamak, he's asked, is it possible to, that we can continue with the syllabics next week? I really enjoyed discussing 
uh, when I lost it. it. Moved so much on me. I really enjoyed guessing what you were writing. Oh, okay, yes, yes, okay. Yeah, we can. We might even throw in a Kahoot in there. There's like Ooh. games where you can, and it does, it does work uh, where you have like, a, and for people that don't know Kahoot, um, you, we throw in, and I'll show you guys how to do this. We'll log in, and then you'll see the competitive nature of everybody. Hi, yeah, uh, yeah. It's kind of exciting because you start guessing what the heck is this word, and you get four choices usually, and so there's true and false. But you use your phone. You just log in, type in the number, and then you get into the game. Um, for the ones that aren't using their phones to to take this uh, class, but uh, Kahoot are fun, and uh, we'll see. I mean, I'll create one for next week. And yes, we'll continue this for sure because we didn't go to the single like s, m, n, e, k, like all those all those uh, end consonants. And we'll cover those. Right. And Bird asked, "Is there an age cutoff for the moose hide tanning camp?" I'm guessing a a young age. I'm guessing I don't know, or is where I'm guessing like. What's the age limit that can attend? Okay. Well, there's some really tough mushrooms and kugums out there. So there, oh, the older, doesn't matter how old, uh, young ones, um, they should have, uh, because there's like, they're razor sharp um, scrapers. And uh, I want to just be clear that, um, yeah, we do have young kids that, that do scrape, but understand that uh, supervision is, is uh it's needed because we've had people cut themselves on those on the scrapers uh, not the fleshers so much but it's the scrapers because they're very sharp and they because they're they're scraping and thinning out the hide uh so that's uh just to be clear uh, it's, it, and it's not it's it's hard but it's fun i don't know how to explain that why the heck would you be how can it be hard and fun? But it is. There, there is one more question. I think that might be all we have time for because you know we do this every week. <laughs> we could keep you here till ten o'clock at night. And I know for you, right now it's an hour ahead, aren't we? We're nine nineteen. Eight nineteen. I'm in Calgary. Oh, you're in Calgary. I forgot. You're not. You're not at home. Okay, so we do have one. Brenda uh, is asking just for a little bit of an explanation of, and she said an example. How would you say my name is blank and I'm from blank clan? How would you say that? Okay, so um, I'm just going to write it. She said, how would you say hi, my name is and I'm from this clan? Okay, so you would say Tanse, uh, Kevin Nia. Um, now the clan is, you could say it Niwaguhtin. So uh, blank, blank, blank. Niwaguhtin. So I'm related to this, so that, that, that clan, also known as family, also known as. Uh, um in in Cree actually Nitu Tim is uh how you would say it, but it's in when you translate Nitu Tim, let's let's say uh, me, I would say Mashkwa Nitu Tim. I'm from the clan, bear clan. So but realistically you're saying my friend is the bear. So I, I understand the question and the context. So it's, it's like, I just want to make sure that uh, it's, uh, I try to do it as, as, as respectfully as possible. So uh, for us, if you have a, a clan like that, a specific clan, it's uh, really special. And you want to, because they, they protect us. They're, they're friends with us. So nitu team mashkwa, nitu team um whatever it might be but also nuaguhtin uh ministikwan nuaguhtin i'm related in ministikwan nuaguhtin onion lake 
New Agustin, um, Paddle Prairie, or, you know, so all these different examples you can use, New Agustin, I, I am related. Thank you, Kevin. And I knew, I know we said we were going to leave with that last question, but there's one question that just came up and I think it, it just needs an answer. And uh, how can you get in touch with elders if you have none because of you've been adopted and probably removed from community? Well, I think this is a good start right here. Like we have elders that are logging in here um, and it's such a lovely, you know, they've been so, I notice you and I, I enjoy the elders that are logging in because they're walking the talk, they're showing that they're, they're supporting here. So I think as Cree culture, this is a place, this is a beautiful place and hopefully you guys can connect. Um, and there's ways where you can just say, you know, um, yeah, they're, they're, we just do it, right? Um, so this is a very good place. I think we've created a really safe environment here where uh, you can reach out, you know, to the elders that are that are logged in, that are visibly, you know, showing themselves, which is, I can ask them now, oh yeah, kisto ipum you mine ipum sitoskagi, supporting them that way. Oh, hi, hi, Kevin. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And thank you everyone who's still here for hanging out and uh, attending tonight's session. As always, uh, it's been a beautiful evening. Um, sitting together, learn language is always a, a great thing. And hi, hi, can and ask something, Kevin. Thank you. We're very grateful for your time and uh, the teachings you share with us. Have a good night. Have a really good evening this evening. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Good night, Dr. Lewis. Good night. Muy